Hello everybody, welcome to Let's Level Up. My name is Rick, and today we're going to be talking about the Marvel Legendary expansion, Paint the Town Red. Now this is a Spider-Man themed expansion, so your friendly neighborhood web slinger is getting a lot of cool friends and two very potent masterminds to battle in Legendary. All in all, I really, really like this expansion. It's not quite Dark City level, but I liked it more than the Fantastic Four expansion just because of the theme, and it gives us carnage. Um, so our two masterminds before we get into the heroes are Carnage and Mysterio. Carnage has an ability called Feast, and so do his uh, villain henchman group, or sorry, his villain group, the Maximum Carnage characters. Um, and Feast happens, or when Feast occurs, rather, um, you discard, or sorry, you KO the top card of your deck. That's very, very powerful. Carnage's Master Strike actually feeds on the Feast ability, um, and if you happen to KO a card that costs zero, more bad things happen. Carnage is very, very powerful. Mysterio is going to have a Master Strike that actually allows him to build on to his Mastermind tactics. Now remember, if you're not familiar with Legendary, you have to hit or fight the Mastermind so many times until all of their Mastermind tactics are gone. So when you fight them, you're going to reveal a card underneath the Mastermind and um, resolve whatever text it says on the fight. Sometimes this is good, sometimes it's bad. It's generally always worth a lot of victory points at the end of the game though. Mysterio is going to essentially get stronger or be harder to kill as the game goes on. And they're like any really good game, there are a lot of ways to lose this game and really a few ways to win. There are actually a few new scheme twists that are centered around the Spider-Man universe which are really neat and a lot of fun to play. And then there are five new heroes. Overall you're going to get 100 cards in this and it costs roughly around $20 MSRP. Um, the heroes are Moon Knight from the Marvel Knights uh, uh, fame. Uh, you're going to have Black Cat, Spider Woman, the Scarlet Spider, and the Black Suit Symbiote Spider-Man, which is very, very cool. Now, some of these heroes are going to feature a new ability called Wall Crawl. And Wall Crawl is actually a very powerful utility that happens when you recruit that character. If you recruit a character with Wall Crawl, you can actually take them and put them on the top of your deck rather than into your discard pile, which we're very accustomed to doing in a lot of different deck builders. Knowing what's coming up next is huge in this type of game. It allows you to plan your next move, and hopefully you'll be able to carry those plans to fruition. So we're going to take a look at some of the cards at the table and kind of explain a little bit of how Legendary works for those of you who are not familiar with it. So if you're completely unfamiliar with Marvel Legendary, um, I'm going to give you a brief rundown of how things work. There are a couple key features to this game that I'd like to point out. One, this game comes with a board which is actually really nice because it sets a, it really helps with setup and not a lot of different deck builders have that. There are a couple major decks that I want to draw your attention to. The hero deck, which will actually fill up here the, the shield HQ where you can actually go and recruit these heroes to make your deck stronger. There's the villain deck that you'll actually flip over one card at the beginning of your turn every turn. Now this villain deck may be something um, like a a villain or a henchman, or it could be a master strike from the main mastermind. It could be something like a bystander or a scheme twist, um, which I'll get into a little bit later. Most of the time, it's going to be very bad for the group, which adds a lot of excitement. Um, Legendary has been um, compared to, I think, um, and I think pretty fairly compared to games like Ascension. This is a deck builder, but it's actually a cooperative deck builder or can be played that way and it's a lot of fun when you do. Um, there are a couple other decks at the top. There's the Bystanders deck, which you can actually save Bystanders in this game, which will add to your victory points at the end of the game. There's a Wounds deck, which basically is a null card, which takes up a spot in your hand of six cards. Um, as with any deck builder, you're going to start out with two primary objectives. You're gonna have a fight or a strike value with your shield troopers, and you'll have four of those when you start. And then you'll have a buy value, which of one, um, with your shield agents. Um, and those guys, uh, I believe you'll have eight of those. So all in all, you'll have 12 cards. And you'll have, always have a hand of six cards, unless you have a mastermind or another um, villain or henchman, which makes you get rid of those cards. Um, what really, really makes this game stand out are these schemes here. 
There are a ton of different schemes that come in the actual core set. This expansion adds about five, I believe, and each other expansion adds some as well. But the schemes are actually ways that make each game unique. Um, schemes could be anything in, from the, in the Marvel Universe, from just a, a midtown bank robbery to actually trying to get a hold of the cube, uh, power of the cube cosmic. Or maybe even trying to stop the aliens, uh, the alien symbiote from spreading out of the city. There's a lot of different things that if you're a Marvel fan, you're really going to enjoy this. Overall, what we're going to be doing is expanding on our deck by recruiting heroes, fighting villains, and potentially trying to thwart the Mastermind. The game ends when all of the tactics beneath the Mastermind have been cleared. Um, and that's, that's a victory condition, I should say. Um, the scheme will always have a condition where evil wins, and that could be anything uh, really in the components of this game. It could be anything. Um, it, you also will lose the game if the villain deck ever is empty. So you're kind of on a timer as well in this game, which makes it for a lot of fun. This is going to play one to five players in about 30 to 60 minutes. Um, I didn't... I, I really liked Legendary because I'm a Marvel fanboy. I'll say that right now. I didn't love Legendary until I got this guy right here, the Dark City expansion pack. I really, really loved what they did here. One, they gave me the ability to play Punisher, and then two, they added in a lot of really cool masterminds, and they improved on one of the biggest complaints of the game, which was uh, making the artwork more dynamic. So Dark City was a must have for me, and if you haven't played it, I definitely recommend you pick it up because it is huge. It's a 350 card expansion set to Legendary, which I think the base set came with 500 cards or something like that. Um, the next expansion was the Fantastic Four expansion, which added in the Fantastic Four and Silver Surfer, as well as the two new masterminds of the Mole Man and Galactus. Um, Overall, I like this one. Galactus is a great mastermind to have and a big challenge for anybody, um, any group out there. So if you're feeling if you're feeling insane, you take on Apocalypse, you take on uh, Galactus and see if you can handle it. Um, of course, we have the, the base set of the game as well. This is a big box game. Um, a lot of cards come in this thing and there's actually really, um, and it contains really excellent ways to contain the cards and carry the cards along, which is nice. The expansion we're going to be talking about, however, is Paint the Town Red, which is the Spider-Man expansion. Um, so this actually comes with 100 new cards. It includes five, um, uh, five schemes, two new villain groups, two masterminds, and five heroes. And without further ado, let's start talking about the heroes. All right, so now that we're zoomed in, I actually want to draw attention to a couple different things here on the card. First, you're going to notice in the top left corner the actual allegiance that this character belongs to. Um, so this is their team identifier, and this is actually a Spidey friend team identifier. Other teams in the game are things like uh, the X-Men or the Avengers or S.H.I.E.L.D. or... Um, what are some of the Marvel Knights, even though they're not really a team per se, but they're kind of in that same universe. Some henchmen or villains or even masterminds will require you to reveal cards in your hand that match these symbols. The symbol below that is the type of card this is. So this is a red card, which is known with the covert symbol or these two arrows that are pointed in. You'll have the hero name underneath the actual name of the card here. And there are a few copies of this particular shadowed spider card. There are three in this deck. And there are 14 cards in the deck as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about down here is the wall crawl ability. Now this is a keyword that happens all the time whenever you recruit this thing from the HQ. Wall crawl allows us to take the cards that we recruit from the HQ and put them on the top of our deck. And this is a pretty powerful thing and a really fun mechanic to take advantage of if you're playing the Spider-Man friends. Um, again, rather than having it go to your discard pile, you'll know you'll be able to get it. And potentially, with the low cost of these cards, you'll be able to wall crawl quite a few of these cards in one turn. Now, the rest of the card text here says you get plus one strike for each other hero you played this turn that cost one or two, which is very interesting. His base strike is one, so essentially he's going to get stronger the more of these Spider-Man characters who are generally very low cost you play in the game. Again, there are three of those. 
The next card, you can tell right away it's a little bit different because it has a yellow back. This is the Spider Sense Tingling card, and it is a Instinct card, which is the yellow. It still costs two, and it says reveal the top two cards of your deck, put any that cost two or less into your hand, put the rest back in any order. A lot of synergy here. And there's actually going to be four of those Spider Sense Tingling cards in this. Okay. Next up, we have Dark Strength. And it is a strength card designated by the green border and the green fists there. Um, again, it has the wall crawl ability. It has a one, high, one or higher strike, and it says reveal the top card of your deck. If it costs one or two, you gain plus two to strike. Awesome card. And there's, what, five of those in there. And finally, we have Thwip. And the whip is the uh, every card or every set in the hero has one card that's just full art, um, and it is kind of their their special power or their their max power that you can get in the game. Um, it is a four strike minimum, and it says to play this card, you must play two cards from your hand on top of your deck. Oh, sorry, you must put two cards on the top of your uh, from your hand on top of your deck. This is a good way to help build out or get rid of your recruit and uh, maximize strike. And again, it costs two, which is one of the cheapest max powers in the game. I think the other Spider-Man's is two as well, but I'm not 100% on that. Black Suit Spider-Man is really neat. His artwork looks good, and he's, I mean, come on, it's, it's the symbiote Spider-Man. He's awesome. He kicks butt. That's what he does. All right, next up we have Black Cat. Um, the first card we're gonna take a look at is again another instinct card, yellow card, it's called Jinx. And it is three strike, cost five. So she's a bit more expensive than Spidey is. It says each player reveals the top card of their deck, choose any number of those cards to be discarded. And that is, she's got three of those. The next card is Casual Bank Robbery. Black Cat's fun because you never really know if she's good or bad. I mean, she's good, I think, at the end of the day, but she really wants to get paid. Um, this card costs four. It's going to give you a recruit, which is the star symbol here, which you can then use to buy more cards from the HQ. And it starts out with two, but can get higher. This is a wall crawl card as well. It says you get another one recruit usable only to recruit the hero in the HQ space under the bank. And again, the, the board is laid out in a way where there's the city, um, and the city goes from the sewers, the banks, the rooftops, um, the streets, and then finally the bridge. And if, if the villains ever get past that, they actually escape and you lose victory points at the end of the game. Um, there are going to be five of these casual bank robberies in the game. Next up, I think is one of my favorite cards she's got, is called Pickpocket. And Pickpocket is a covert card. Um, again, so was casual bank robbery. And Covert, this is a zero strike, it's a wall crawl. This only costs one. It says, reveal the top card of any player's deck. You get strength equal to that card's printed recruit value plus its printed strike value. And this is a very interesting card and a powerful card if you can get lucky enough to get it. Um, let's see, and there are gonna be another five of those pickpockets. Um, Finally, this is going to give us to her final card. This is the Cat Burglar card, the full art. And um, this actually says each other player reveals a covert hero or chooses a bystander from their victory pile. You rescue those bystanders. And it's going to give you five strikes. Now, this symbol right here means if you played a Spider Man uh, or Spider Friend before you played this card in your hand, um, you get plus one strike for each bystander you rescued this turn. 
So this is kind of, um, this is interesting and it's really unique because it's playing into what Black Cat is, right? She's a thief at the end of the day. So it's it's hurting your, your allies victory points a little bit, but potentially making this a very powerful strike. It costs eight, so it's a bit expensive when you compare it to the Spider-Man villains, but it's pretty on par with the other master cards from the different heroes. And the artwork's really nice. All right, next up we're gonna have Moon Knight. And you can see this is already, a, he's a Marvel Knight, um, which is awesome. I really love the Marvel Knights. They're some of my favorite comics. Um, it is a tech hero, and you can tell by the kind of black background here. This is Crescent Moon Darts. And uh, man, Moon Knight just looks awesome. Um, he is three strike, and you reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a instinct or a tech card, you can draw it. And if you draw it while you're playing it, you can play it. So you can really make good combos with this card. This costs five, though, and there are going to be three copies of the Crescent Moon Darts. Next up, we have Climbing Claws, which is another tech card. Now, this is a wall crawl ability, which is awesome. It gives you two recruit, and if you played an instinct hero before that, you get another one recruit. So this is potentially three if you play your cards right. Let's see, we got, what, five of those? Yep. Next up, we've got the Lunar Communion. This is an instinct hero and wall crawl. It's two strike, and this is whenever you defeat a villain on the rooftops this turn, you may KO one of the cards or a card from your discard pile. Sorry, you can KO one of your cards or a card that's in your discard pile. Good way to get rid of wounds, this card. Or those pesky shield agents and troopers that just muck up your hand at the end of the game. Um, you got five of those. Okay, and his master ability here is the Golden Ankh of Kasu. Sorry, Kanshu. This is an instinct hero, and it's a six strike, costs eight. It says, whenever you defeat a villain on the rooftops this turn, rescue a bystander equal to that villain's printed victory point value. And if you played a tech hero before you played this card, you may move a villain to the rooftops. If another villain is already there, swap them. This is a cool way to... Um, kind of maximize his damage output. Really, really neat. I really enjoy Moon Knight and all of the Marvel Knights. I really want to play him and the rest of them versus uh, um, Wilson Fisk so they can take down the Kingpin together. That'd be fun. All right, next up we have the Scarlet Spider. Now, Scarlet Spider's first card is Lead From Above. It's a covert card. Um, it is a three plus strike. It's wall crawl, costs six. And if you played an instinct hero before him, he gets two strikes. So this is potentially five strike. That's a big, big uh, striker here. And you're gonna get three of those in his deck. His next card is Perfect Hunter. It's an instinct card. It is one strike. It is a wall crawl ability and you get to draw a card when you play it. it costs four. Anytime you get to draw cards, it's always good. There's five of those here. Next up, we've got Flip Out. It's a strength card. One recruit, wall crawl, draw a card. Cost two. Five of those. And his big power here is a strength card. It's called Sting of the Spider. I love the art here. And then you have five strike. Whenever you put a card on top of the deck this turn, you may draw that card. Cost seven, but very powerful and very useful with the wall crawl abilities. The last hero we're going to look at in the set is Spider Woman. And the first, uh, this is actually a ranged hero, which is noted by the blue background. Um, Venom Blast is this. Uh, it's three strike. It's wall crawl, which is nice. Cost six. It says reveal the top card of your deck. If that card has a um, recruit icon on it, draw it. It looks like there's going to be 
three of those Venom Blasts. Right behind it, we've got another ranged card. It is Bioelectric Shock. And it's two strike, wall crawl. You reveal the top card of your deck. If that card has a strike icon on it, draw it. It costs four. And there's gonna be five of those. Her other card before her maximum is a strength card. It's called Radioactive uh, Spider. And three recruit, it says to play this card, you must put a card from your hand on the top of your deck. And it's cost two. Five of those. And finally, her master ability is the um, awesome Arachno... Uh, sorry, sorry, the Arachno Pheromones. It is a covert strike. Um, it says, recruit a hero from the HQ for free. If you played a Spider-Man friend before this card, put that hero on the top of your deck for seven. This is a way for you to ch channel this into getting multiple big cards for free, which is awesome. That's it for the heroes. Now let's take a look at some of the minor henchmen, or the villains, rather, um, before we actually take a look at the masterminds. Okay, so the first villain group we're going to look at are the Sinister Six. And the first villain here is Chameleon. And uh, Chameleon's awesome. He, he basically can disguise himself as any person, which is really cool. Um, Chameleon has a fight effect that says copy the effects of the hero in the HQ space under the Chameleon, including its recruit and strike. Now he is a strict strike and is worth two victory points after you fight him. Now to fight an actual villain, you're going to need to be able to play that much strike um, in order to fight him. Now when you fight him, you already have beaten him if you can get that much strike. If you can't get that much strike, he can't be beaten. The next card is the Hobgoblin. Which again, another awesome character in the Spider-Man universe. He's worth three victory points and has an ambush effect. Now ambush is something that happens as soon he comes out into the city. It says each Sinister Six villain captures a bystander. <clears throat> now if a villain has a bystander underneath him and you defeat that villain, um, that bystander is going to go into your victory pile along with that villain. And he has a five strike. Next up, the man, one of the men who's actually, I believe, killed Spider-Man before. Uh, Craven the Hunter. Uh, Craven is an awesome character. Uh, it says Craven's strike is equal to the buy of the highest cost hero in the HQ. And he has an escape trait. So if he escapes the city... It says, after you do the normal escape, KO, KO a hero from the HQ with the highest cost. So this is a bad one to let go if you do. Next up we have Sandman. Now Sandman's strike is twice the number of villains in the city. So potentially Sandman is a 10, potentially he is a 2. Um, each player reveals an instinct hero if he escapes or gains a wound. Wounds are not fun. Okay, we have two copies of Shocker here. And Shocker has an ambush effect. It says ambush player reveals instinct hero or discards a card. Um, has a strike value of five. And finally, Vulture. Now, Vulture is neat. He's got an ambush av uh, ability that happens as soon as he comes in and an escape ability. Says after Vulture enters the city, if there is a villain on the rooftops or bridge, swap Vulture with the one of those villains. Each player reveals a uh, an instinct hero or gains a wound whenever he escapes. So Vulture is all about getting in and getting out of the city as fast as possible. And there's two copies of him in this Sinister Six deck. The next villain deck I'm actually really excited for because it's one of my favorite Spider-Man books ever are the Maximum Carnage villains. And the first guy we're going to look at here is Carrion. Now all of these villains, I think all of them, have the Feast ability. And again, Feast makes you discard, or rather KO, and when you KO something it's gone, um, the top card of your, of your deck. It says, whenever Carrion feasts on a hero that costs one buy or more, Put Carrion back in the city space where he was. That's pretty interesting. That's a four strike. 
There are two copies of Carrion. The next up we have Demo Goblin. Demo Goblin captures a bystander and then he feasts. Five strike. Next up we have Doppelganger. Uh, Doppelganger's strength is equal to the buy of the hero in the HQ space underneath him and he also feasts. Now I think all these guys are going to feast only when you fight them, um, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, Shriek. She has a feast ability. It says when Shriek feasts on the zero cost hero, each other player gains a wound. She's a six strike and when she escapes, every player gains a wound. And that's it for the maximum carnage. These these awful, awful, terrible people who help carnage just murder so many. Now that we've talked about the actual villains, let's get in and look at the individual masterminds that are unique to this set. Okay, the first one we're going to take a look at is Mysterio, the Master of Illusion. Now, Mysterio always leads the Sinister Six. His Master Strike says that you shuffle the Master Strike into Mysterio's face-down Mastermind Tactics, and this card becomes a Mastermind Tactic worth six victory points. Um, to hit or to fight Mysterio, you have to have eight strike in order to do that. Now, what's cool about Mysterio is he's actually going to get stronger as the game goes on. So the more Master Strikes you end up pulling out, the more times you have to hit him. Um, his first Mastermind tactic we're going to look at is called Blurring Images. And whenever you pull this fight out, it says you get plus one recruit for each Mastermind tactic Mysterio has left after this one. The next one is Captive Audience. Its fight value says rescue a bystander for each mastermind tactic has left after this one. The next one is called, I'm sorry, Master of Illusions. And this fight says if this is not the final tactic, shuffle a master strike tactic from each other player's victory pile and put it back into Mysterio's mastermind tactics. So this is a way for him to basically repower himself if this is not the final one. Um, it's kind of similar to Apocalypse's uh, card. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Mists of Deception. And this card says, if this is not the final tactic, reveal the top five cards of the villain deck, play all of the master strikes you revealed, put the rest on the bottom of the deck in a random order. So Mysterio is actually really fun and I think going to be uh, challenging, but really good after you're getting out of that basic level of Legendary. Next up, we're going to look at the big red monster, the Maniac himself, Mr. Cletus Cassidy. Uh, this is Carnage. Carnage always leads maximum Carnage. You have to have nine strikes in order to hit him, and he gives you six victory points whenever you do so. Um, his master strike is to feast on each player. Whenever this master strike feasts on a player with a zero cost hero, that player gains a wound. That's a devastating ability. His other, um, his other mastermind tactics, uh, the first one we're going to look at is Drooling Jaws. And this one says each player reveals the top card of their deck. Then Carnage feasts on that player, um, on the player of your choice. Again, nine strike, six victory points. Endless Hunger. This says if feasts, if Carnage feasts on a zero cost hero this way, repeat this process. So you can just go through, you can go through your whole starting deck if you pull this out early on. Next up is called Feed Me. This is a feast, and it actually says you get plus recruit equal to the cost of the card a Carnage feasts on. And then Om Nom Nom. This card says if Carnage feasts on a zero cost hero this way, each other player KOs a bystander from their victory pile. So Carnage is a nasty, nasty combatant. The final cards we're going to take a look at are the schemes that are available with this set. 
So the first one is Invade the Daily Bugle News HQ. Um, now this is a scheme, and to set it up, you're going to put eight twists into the villain deck. You're going to add six extra henchmen from a single henchman group to the hero deck. It says you can't fight villains in the HQ. It says twist, KO a hero from the HQ and put the highest strike villain from the city into the H HQ space. It says evil wins when there are five villains in the HQ. So basically the Daily Bugle is going to get overrun if you don't do something to stop them. Um, splice human DNA with spider DNA. The man spider. Um, this is eight twists. Include the Sinister Six as one of the villain groups. Special rule. Sinister Six get plus three strike. And all hero cards have the wall crawl ability. The twist here is each player puts a Sinister Six villain from their victory pile on top of the villain deck. No matter how many players did so, play a single card from the villain deck. Evil wins when six Sinister Six villains have escaped or the villain deck runs out. Next up is the Clone Saga. Awesome book line. Uh, twist, each player reveals two non-gray heroes with the same card name or discards down to three cards. Now, the twist happens anytime you pull a scheme twist from the villain deck. Evil wins when two villains with the same card name have escaped or the villain deck runs out. And the final card we're going to look at in this review is Weave a Web of Lies. Now, this scheme is seven twists. Excuse me. Um, whenever you defeat a villain, you may pay one recruit if you do rescue a bystander. You can't fight the mastermind unless you have a bystander in your victory pile for each twist next to the mastermind. Stack the twist next to the mastermind. And on if you pull the seventh twist, evil wins. So this is a new interesting way to kind of make the mastermind a little bit harder. Now that's it for an overall look at the game. Follow us now for our afterthoughts. Well, Paint the Town Red has a lot of punch in this little package. Uh, not only do you get two masterminds, five new heroes, and a bunch of scheme twists to freshen up your game, um, or rather schemes, um, you, get, you get more of the Spider-Man universe, which is one of the more complex and um, really some of my favorite stories in comic books revolve around Spider-Man, and specifically uh, the Maximum Carnage books. I mean, those are so cool, and Carnage was such a character that is just absolutely insane, and he's a killer. He's a stone-cold killer. He'll murder anybody. He forms his own little team to take on Spider-Man and Venom and some of Spidey's friends, um, and it's just almost enough to actually stop our, um, our, our web-slinging friend here. For, or good for us, a good thing for us, it didn't actually happen. Uh, but overall, um, this expansion is really neat. I really like the wall, wall crawl ability. I love the uh, the mastermind strike, or sorry, the master strike that Carnage has with the feast ability. It's just so powerful, especially if you hit that thing early on. Man, you're in trouble. Um, you also have the new uh, the mastermind of Mysterio, who I think is really fun and a great way for beginners to really start playing legendary. Um, and it's even uh, I wouldn't say it's a it's a beginner's mastermind by any means, but it's definitely a fun one that's pretty easy to beat if you play your cards right and you build your decks right. Um, it's, it's He's not Galactus, and he shouldn't be, which is really fun. One thing that I think that Legendary has always succeeded at is giving us heroes that play like you would expect them to. The same is true for the five heroes in this game. Really a lot of fun. And it adds some very interesting changes from the normal red and blue suit Spidey that you get in the core set with the new symbiote Spider-Man. Um, very cool. Adding in Scarlet Spider, uh, Spider-Woman, Black Cat, and Moon Knight are just icing on the cake. So uh, kudos to Upper Deck. This is a very cool game, and uh, I'm very happy to have this expansion on my shelf. So if you're interested, check out your friendly local gaming store, or maybe even look at Cool Stuff Inc. or Amazon.com. I'm sure we'll have this guy as well. This is a really cool, and I would say if you're a fan of Legendary, a must-have expansion.
Until next time, I hope you guys give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And most importantly, game on.